Well, I figured I'd pop on here this morning just for a minute or two and do a little tribute to Heiko Obermann. I am not a professional um, Reformation scholar, a late medieval scholar by any means, but I consider myself a uh, decent amateur. And I do teach it regularly to our undergrads here at Lindenwood University. And as a result, uh, I try to spend some time reading in it and new sources and secondary sources in it um, as I prepare to teach that class. So I'm teaching it this fall, and so I'm reading about it again uh, right now. And I'm, I've just started another of uh, Obermann's books that I hadn't read through thoroughly before, and I thought, hey, I should hop on and tell people to check some Obermann out. I have um, three books from Obermann on my shelf, although I have chunks of other ones and various articles and things tucked away in my files. And I just want to talk briefly about each of these books and uh, recommend them to you in the strongest terms. So here is the first one, Obermann's Luther, Man Between God and the Devil. I've read a number of biographies of Luther, and this is definitely my favorite. You've got the great um, Lucas Cranach um, painting, portrait of Luther there on the front as Junker George, uh, Knight George during his time in uh, the Wartburg in hiding. Uh, this painting, the sketch was done for it uh, when Luther made a clandestine visit to Wittenberg uh, during that period in order to uh, consult with Melanchthon and others uh, to keep the Reformation on track. Some uh, great stuff in here. i uh, give you a sense of the table of contents. This chapter here about the Reformation as a medieval event is perhaps the best one in the whole book. Um, Obermann's specialty is really to talk about the Reformation situated as it is following the late medieval period. And so he's really attentive um, to both the continuities and discontinuities that you see uh, between those time periods. So that's a really good chapter from him. Um, this chapter on humanism as well, I also enjoyed. Uh, but just in general, um, Obermann in this book uh, captures a lot of the personality of Luther. And Luther's personality uh, was very fascinating and engaging in its own right, so that makes the book fascinating and engaging. So that is uh, the first book I want to recommend to you from Obermann, his Luther, Man Between God and the Devil. Book number two, Obermann's The Dawn of the Reformation. Nice uh, woodcut cover there, picture of a city. I'm not sure which one. Let's see if we can find out. Let's see if it'll tell us in here. Oh, I guess not. It's Erfurt, according to the back cover. Uh, a sketch by Hartmann. Schädel, originally published in 1493. So if you wonder what the city of Erfurt looked like in the 15th century, well, this is supposed to give you some kind of an idea. That's pretty cool. Um, once again, very attentive to the lines of both continuity and discontinuity uh, between late medieval uh, thought and the Reformation. You see he starts off with the 14th century and builds up from there. A lot of great stuff in here, especially this chapter, chapter 4, I find to be very important, where he discusses uh, the Vicentibus quod in se est. Um, this ties in with Luther's doctrine of justification and its medieval antecedents, the question of um, what do humans have to contribute? Do they simply have to do their best and God will meet them uh, with the rest, or is something else at work there? Um, not a doctrine you'll necessarily find in Thomas Aquinas, but it's there later on in people like uh, Scotus and Ockham and Gabriel Beale, uh, who was the person to which Luther responded a great deal. Also, a lot of good stuff in this uh, book about the late medieval distinction between God's um, potentia absoluta and potentia ordinata, two different kinds of power that God has um, and how those relate. And then you even see him get up over here into Calvin, and this Calvin's critique of Calvinism uh, is fascinating as well. 
So this is another good book by Obermann that I highly recommend, The Dawn of the Reformation with its beautiful woodcut of Erfurt. And now this is the one I'm working on right now. I started reading this last night and uh, sat down at my kitchen table after other folks had gone to bed and I read a hundred pages of it. It was uh, super fascinating and super engaging. It's, um, as you see, it's illustrated by key documents. So what he does is he has about a 50 page introduction in which he's primarily concerned to rehabilitate this concept of a reformational forerunner, uh, rehabilitate it and um, redefine it. And it's an interesting um, and insightful uh, stroll down the historiographical lane uh, for Reformation studies. Ends up talking about people like Seberg and Harnack and uh, charting a course beyond them for looking at Reformation history. So that's a really great uh, start there in that 50 or so page introduction. Then um, chapter 2, as you can see down at the bottom, dealing with the question of scripture and tradition. And this isn't the only place Obermann talks about it. I'm pretty sure he talks about it over there in the Harvest of Medieval Theology. I've seen him talk about it other places. But he distinguishes between what he calls Tradition 1 and Tradition 2. So he thinks that putting the debate in terms of scripture and tradition um, is confusing. We've got multiple different counts of tradition going. And Tradition 1 understands tradition to be scripture and commentary about scripture. Um, tradition 2 is when you start talking about there being another oral tradition alongside scripture and you start talking about their relationship. So uh, I read that bit up there from John Brevacoxa and also that Hoke piece. And as you see, that's the first 100 pages or so. So I'm really looking forward to the rest. This uh, section here on justification, then the church, then the Eucharist, then exegesis. So that's Forerunners of the Reformation by Heiko Obermann. I'm currently reading it. It's wonderful, like all the stuff that I've read from Obermann. Obermann, uh, if my memory serves me, began his career, or at least earlier in his career, was at Harvard. Uh, then he went over to Tübingen, and then I think he ended up at the University of Arizona or something like that. So three great books that if you have interests in the Reformation, you should definitely, oh, can't quite sit straight up there, definitely check them out.